Hey, this is Rob from Producer Tech, and in this movie, I'm going to run you through Liquid Rhythm, a beat creation plugin from Wave DNA, which is available on the Plugin Boutique website that I've just used to create this beat. In terms of its overall layout, the interface is pretty straightforward, with a library on the left and an arrangement section in the middle. There's also a useful info section in the bottom left, so the window has a similar format to Ableton Live. The rest of the bottom section is quite different though, as you've got loads of tools for editing molecules alongside, which is what the instrument calls the blocks of note data for tracks in your beat. Then on the right, there are the Beat Builder and Beat Weaver panels. These sections are designed to make it easier for you to construct your own simple or complex and unique beats. Before I show you how to use them, let's create some drum tracks, which I'll first do using the library. Here, you choose a type of drum, and then click on the samples below to find an appropriate one, which you then double click or drag into the arrange area to make a track for it. Or without the library, I can use the plus button here and then choose a drum from the menu, then click on it to create a track. Sticking with just the three main drums for now then, let's see how to make a pattern for them. First though, I'll bring the tempo down to 100 BPM in live, as I want to make a glitch hop style beat. So the tempo of the plugin is now 100 BPM as well. And now I'm going to open up the beat builder section, as this is the simplest of the two right hand areas. Here you can quickly select the options in the bar form list to choose a suitable pattern. And notice when I choose a different track, these presets change accordingly to suit whatever drum I have selected. So to lay down a very simple alternating kick and snare, I just choose the first option, which has the kicks on beats 1 and 3. And then for the snare, I choose the first option again, which has events on the second and fourth beats. For the hi-hat, I could choose the first option again, which gives me hats on every step, which are quavers, or eighth notes. So we'll get two every beat. Let me just hit play on Live's transport so you can hear that. But first, I'll loop bar 1 of Live's arrangement as the plugin's timeline locks to live in this mode, as you'd expect. So this bar form list contains various patterns of quavers for the hat, also with varying velocity values, which is shown by the grey bar above the notes. However, if I want to make the rhythm faster, I can change the beat form in the section below. This will change every hat in the list of bar forms to either sixteenths or sixteenths where only every second one is heard or triplet sixteenths. And you can see these are colour coded, as is the case throughout the instrument, where binary patterns with two events per beat are blue and ternary ones with three events per beat are all red. Of course, you don't have to change all of the beats, as I've been doing here using the arrows at the end, but you can pick and choose the beat form for each step by clicking on one instead. As well as mute a step by clicking on it. Or you can use the surprise me randomize button below, which is one of my favourite things about the instrument. Let's take a look at the Beat Weaver Rhythm Synthesizer now, which is an insanely comprehensive section that takes a moment to get your head round, but offers you so much in terms of presets and instant combinations of beat and bar forms. I've got Live's Transport running with the metronome turned on, and I've soloed a new Clave track I've added to the arranger now. With the track's molecule selected, which is empty, there's nothing showing in the Beat Weaver. But what I can do now is either click on the arrow alongside beat forms or bar forms to open up the map for each one which shows every possible combination in a large diagram. Inside the circle are the beat forms, so we got the four we saw in the last section at the top. And then after that there are more complex beat forms. Then in the section for each one are their different variations, with each one having certain beats active or muted. And choosing a beat form sets every step to this pattern. For example, if I choose the triplet beat form, then the one in the top corner is the straight triplet we've heard already whereas the other options in that section are the same pattern but with one of the three muted. Or 
or in the next section we have the rhythm doubled with six events. Which gives us lots more combinations to choose from. You can see how the options with more events live on the outer edge of the circle. With the straight bar form selected, the patterns on each step are the same. But I can use the controls in the beat form section now to change that. As we have a binary bar form selected, we only have two options here, which you can see from the first and second step for each beat respectively. I can use the boxes here to solo these steps if I like. Or I can click on one of them and then choose a different beat form to change the pattern that way. I think I might go for some binary ones instead. Then there's the bar form map, which has all the possible combinations of these beat forms for a bar, so it allows you to instantly create even more complex patterns. Again, the busier options can be found on the outer edge. Once you've found something along the lines of what you want, you can always go back to the Beat Builder section to edit the steps. If you want to create parts in a more manual way, then you can use the pencil tool to add beats. Clicking on the first division in a step creates a single event, so a quaver. Whereas the second division makes a semi-quaver, or sixteenth. And you can double click to delete events. With the pencil tool active, you can also change the velocities of your drums. I might just use the swap tool temporarily to change the sound of the clave. If you can't find the sound you want, you can always load one of your own samples, which you do by creating a new instrument with the instrument editor. In this window, you can load up one or more samples from your own library, as it's capable of multi-sampling where you can have several samples mapped to different velocity ranges, for example. And also, other MIDI settings such as the velocity curve and note the instrument is mapped to can be edited here. Now let's take a quick look at the molecule tools at the bottom. Here there are things like a fully fledged randomizer, which allows you to set the amount that various parameters, such as the bar or beatforms or velocity, are to be randomized, after which you can hit the surprise me button to come up with something new. Then there's Groove Mover, which shifts the beats around in the molecule according to the bar form pattern below. The bar form pattern is the larger one at the bottom and indicates the underlying groove of the molecule. Changing this with Move Notes active shifts around the notes in the molecule to give you an alternative groove. The bar form pattern you have selected makes a difference in the next section too, which is a handy one that allows you to edit the velocity or groove of strong, medium or weak portions of the bar or beat form. With bar form selected, you can see which parts these relate to by hovering over them with the mouse. Then the sliders can be used to change those beats level or timing. Or with beat form selected, you can adjust the individual beats instead, which is sometimes more suitable for your pattern. The Beatform palette shows you all of the available beatforms, categorised into groups, which can be dragged and dropped into the Beat Builder section, 
or directly into the arranger. And the final two sections offer even more ways of adjusting the molecule, with dials for scrolling between different beat forms for steps, and then switches for shifting all the beat forms to the left or right. So as you can see, there are tons of options for changing up your beats, with literally hundreds of rhythmic possibilities at your fingertips. One of the best things about Liquid Rhythm is how well it integrates with the door. It's easy to set it up to route MIDI in or out of the instrument. With Live's drum racks being such a great and easy way to create and mix my drums, it works really well if I use Liquid Rhythm to trigger it. This is done simply by setting Liquid Rhythm as the input source for the MIDI track the drum rack is on, after which you just drag samples to the pads being triggered in the rack. You can also see the MIDI notes each drum relates to in the library. Now when I hit play, my drum rack is being triggered by Liquid Rhythm. And I can mix Liquid Rhythm's drums with my drum rack if I want to add extra texture to each drum. And now I'll add some bass. So to summarise, Liquid Rhythm is a really interesting device for creating beats. There are endless possibilities for making rhythms, and editing them to come up with cool, unique patterns, which are particularly suited to the glitchier side of production. Although it works well on its own, I find it most useful as a means of quickly and easily programming drum racks, or other instruments in the door. To find out more, or purchase the instrument, head to its page at pluginboutique.com. <laughs>